Elsevier Incorporated presents Your Brain in 15 Minutes, Give or Take a Few, by Bernard J. Bars and Nicole M. Gage, the editors of Cognition, Brain and Consciousness, an Introduction to Cognitive Neuroscience. brain alone arise our pleasures, joys, laughter, and jokes, as well as our sorrows, pains, griefs, and tears. Through it, in particular, we think, see, hear, and distinguish the ugly from the beautiful, the bad from the good, the pleasant from the unpleasant. That was said by Hippocrates of Hippo in the 5th century BCE, and we still believe it. Your brain is your biggest clump of nerve cells, approximately a hundred billion neurons. The question is always, how can we simplify it? We've come a long way in observing the living brain. There's a slightly old-fashioned picture on the left, and a newer picture on the right. Here, we present a functional approach to understand what the brain actually does to help us perceive, act, learn, feel, and think. Here's the central nervous system at the center in green. It is the brain and the spinal cord. Here's our basic unit of nerve cells shown by fluorescent microscopy. Here's a simple overview of brain functions. On the left hand side we have sensory input that goes into working memory and that can turn into motor output. At the bottom we have long-term memories and between working memory and the long-term memories we have both learning and retrieval. It's simple and it covers a great deal of the evidence. Working memory gives access to cognitive functions including executive control, imagery, inner speech, problem solving, voluntary attention, rehearsal, and recall. Here is a useful definition of working memory. Here, Here we have a little bit more detail on the left hand side. You see vision, hearing, and touch and the yellow arrow on top indicates bottom-up attention. That's the attention that is driven by the senses, like the sight of a tiger or the roar of a truck that's heading. So sensory input is the left-hand side, working memory is a central column, motor output is on the right-hand side, as you can see here. And at the very bottom, we have the long-term memories. There are many of them, perhaps half a dozen or even more. And it looks like all parts of the brain get involved in memory of one kind or another. So learning is the storage coming from working memory to long-term memory. How these functions look in the brain. This is a conventional view of the cortex. It helps us to see the left side of the left hemisphere, which is typically involved in language, especially the production of language. On the bottom, you see the midline view of the brain, and it is convenient to show the left side of the right hemisphere. The cortex divides naturally into a rear half, which supports sensory perception, and a front half dedicated to action control, planning, and decision making. Sensory functions provide the primary input into the brain. You see on the right-hand side, area V1, which is the first visual map in the cortex. It is a precise map of the retinal input 
into the eye. Visual cortex includes the light blue areas beginning at the very rear in area 17, also called V1, and spreading to the other blue areas indicated here. We can see intense activity in this area when someone sees a visual senses reach cortex and the rear half of the brain as well. For example, look at hearing. Message A is arriving in this young man's right ear and he is speaking it at the same time. Under those conditions, a different message B coming into the left ear isn't really brain, therefore, is very selective about the information that it takes in. Here is an MEG image of a single word being heard by this person, uh, and as you can see, the activation starts in the auditory area, which is also called Wernicke's area for speech perception. And pain perception follow pretty much the same rules of thumb. Here we can see an electrical shock on the left hand traveling up the arm to the spinal cord and crossing over to the other side of the brain. As you can see, the sensory body map in the cortex represents the opposite side of the body and it's distorted because some parts of the body are much more sensitive to sensory touch than others. This other. is a computer MRI slice of the sensory body map with the green hotspots from simulating the feet and the red hotspots coming from the hands. As you know, the sensory body map is cross-wired to the opposite side. Motor functions provide the output side of the brain. We normally talk about voluntary motor control when we talk about motor functions. Voluntary motor control comes from the motor cortex and goes down mainly to the skeletal muscles of the body which are the muscles that control our limbs and torso. And here you can see the motor cortex in this slice of the cortex between the two blue lines. It looks like a triangular slice. Here we can see an fMRI movie of a single finger press on the right-hand side, beginning from cortex on the left motor cortex, going to the right cerebellum, and then to the right.